Hi and welcome to a new Airbush One tutorial. Today we're going to explore this valve system mechanism. It's easy to set up and even though you may never need a rig like this, you'll learn about the powerful Ray Collision Espresso node, which I'm sure you'll find numerous uses for as I have. Hopefully you've downloaded the simple model from my website so we don't have to waste time building it. So let's get started. So I want to begin by animating the rotation on the main shaft. As we can see, we want to animate the B rotation. So let's set a keyframe at zero, then go to frame 30 and set the B rotation to 180. but we need the shaft to continue to rotate past frame 30. So let's have a look at the track properties. If we go into the after drop down window here, we can set this to repeat, then set the repetitions to say a hundred is fine. That should be plenty. You can always change it later if you need more and that works great. But we are stuck with this speed, and we could change the value on the second keyframe, but there is a better way. So let's delete these keyframes. Now over here in the Attributes Manager, there seems to be some residual something going on. Uh, so if you shift option click on that window that, or that little port, uh, that removes all the keyframes, and that works on any keyframes. So if you ever need to remove a lot, you just do that. So the first thing we want to do is go up to the main shaft and apply an Espresso tag. Now grab the main shaft in the Object Manager and drag it into the Espresso window. Then click this blue box, go to Coordinates, Rotation, Rotation B. Then right click in the Espresso window and go to New Node, Espresso, General, Time. Then connect that Time to Rotation B. And it works OK, but we need to be able to control the speed. Just double click this line, then right click in the window and go to New Node, Espresso, Calculate, Math. Connect time to the upper input of the math node, then the output to rotation B. Okay, so it's turning, but nothing has really changed. Let's look at the parameters and change add to multiply. Now it has stopped because we are now multiplying by zero, so nothing will happen. So let's change this to two. Let's crank it up to 5. But we don't want to have to dig around the Espresso tag to change the speed. So let's set up a simple control. Go up and click on the main shaft, then come down to the Attribute Manager and select Add User Data. Let's change the name to Speed. Change the interface to Float Slider. Uh, change percent to real. So let's set the min to minus 20. Now make sure to click somewhere in this box before changing the next max parameter. Change the max to 20. Now let's set the step size to 0.1 so we have a little more control over the speed. And you can always change these uh, parameters later. Uh, when you're done just close the window. Now go to User Data tab, and here's the slider, but now we need to wire it up so that it actually does something. So we want to hook this slider to the lower input of the math node. So drag the shaft object into the Espresso window, and go down to User Data and select Speed, then just wire that to the lower input of the math node. But we want easy access to that speed slider. So if we select the main shaft object, then you can right click for options and go down to Add to HUD. Hold down Command on the Mac, click and drag the slider. I'm going to remove this and then re-add it by simply clicking on the speed slider itself and dragging it into the viewport. Now adjust the speed 
and we now have control over the shaft speed. We can also set speed to negative numbers to reverse the rotation of the main shaft. And now we can also set the slider to zero to keep the shaft from turning at all. This gives us so much more control than just using the keyframes. So now that we have the speed controller set up, let's get started setting up the ray collision. So go up to the object palette. Uh, now I have a null icon set up separately here, but if you hold and click the cube, uh, you can get your null there. So we want this null to be at the center of the cam and valve stem shaft. We're going to use the shaft and spring object to position our null. So grab the null and make it a child of the shaft and spring object. Now, if you haven't downloaded the zero PR palette, you can get it where you downloaded the valve mechanism file. If you're not sure how to load it, Go to the download section on my home page of my site and watch a very short video on how to install the palette. It really comes in handy for several things uh, like visibility, x-ray mode, and what we're getting ready to do with uh, zeroing out position and rotation. So once the null is a child of the shaft and spring object, select the null and hit the zero PR button. Now the null is at the exact location of the axis of the shaft and spring object. Okay, so now take the null out and place it just above the valve cam and bushing. Now, let's go into front view by hitting, uh, just hit F4 on the keyboard, which will give us a, actually a side view of the rig. Uh, then go to display and choose hidden line. Now, select the null and let's change the name to ray point 1. So now we want this null at the center of our main shaft. Let's turn on snapping, select the null, and just drag it down until it snaps to the center of the shaft, uh, then turn snapping off. Let's change the display of this null. So if you click the drop down window of display and select sphere, I'll set the orientation to XZ and increase the radius size. Unfortunately, we can't see the null, so let's go up to the viewport display and change it from hidden line to lines. Now we can see it. Let's make it a bit smaller. And then let's copy it by clicking on it while holding down Command on the Mac and dragging a copy and change the 1 to a 2. So we now have ray point 1 and ray point 2. Okay, so let's move ray point to null by grabbing the Y axis and sliding it up the valve stem shaft. The position of this null doesn't need to be exact, but it needs to be along the shaft, so let's place it around this upper portion. Okay, so that's looking good. Uh, now select ray point two. Hold down command on the Mac and drag another copy of that null and rename the null to hit position. So now let's move the hit position null down here. Uh, just somewhere in this area is fine. We're gonna make this null display a bit larger so we can see it easier. And let's turn display color on and make it green. Let's also grab those other two nulls and turn color on and just let's make those red. Okay, so now we have these nulls set up where we need them for our ray collision. So let's add an Espresso tag to our valve mechanism null. Double click the Espresso tag to bring up the Espresso window. Then right click and go to New Node, Espresso, General, and add the Ray Collision node. Now don't worry about the yellow, that will disappear when we add the object. So what we need to do is add the Valve Cam and Bushing object to the Espresso window. If you click on, click on the object port 
and drag it to the red box of the valve cam and bushing object node. Once you are hovering over it, then you can just release the mouse and that will bring up all the port options. Then come down to object. So now let's drag out the ray point nulls into the Expresso window. We're going to connect those now the same way we did the first. Click and drag on the port, come to the red box, release the mouse, go to coordinates, global position, global position. Then just, just do the same thing for a ray point 2 null. Now right click the red box on the ray collision node and select hit position. So these two ray point nulls we created are now setting up an invisible ray that intersects the valve cam object and that is going to be our hit position where the ray hits the cam valve cam surface. So drag the hit position null into the Expresso window and connect the ray collision hit position port to the global position of the hit position null. So you may have noticed that the null has moved, but it really isn't in the proper position yet. So we need to go to the ray collision node and make sure you deselect the test only parameter. I have no idea what this is for, but I know that it doesn't work until you deselect it. Now our hit null is in the correct position at the base of our valve stem and right on the face of the polygons of our cam object surface. So go up to the main shaft object to bring up our speed controller. But let's make our controller stay in the viewport all the time by right clicking on the slider in the viewport then going to show always. Okay, so now adjust the speed up and hit play. So we forgot to do an important thing. We need to connect the valve cam and bushing object to the main shaft so it will turn. So let's go to the valve cam and bushing uh, object here and right click, come down to the character tags and add a constraint. So if you go down to the attribute manager, select PSR on the constraint, then go to the PSR tab and deselect position. We don't need that. Then go up to the main shaft object and drag it into the target field of the constraint tag because that's what we're going to constrain to. The valve cam and bushing will probably jump and that's okay, it means the constraint is working. So the hit null should now ride along the recessed surface of the cam object. So if we grab the playhead and move it slowly forward, we can see how the hit null is following our cam. So as I move the playhead forward, you can see that the hit null is really not following the surface very well though and that is probably a priority issue. So let's go up to the Espresso tag on the valve mechanism null and and change the value to 100. Go back to the playhead and move it forward. So now our hit null is following perfectly and the cam object is no longer jumping so that looks good. Okay, so drag the hit position null below the valve cam and bushing object. Then drag the shaft and spring hierarchy and make it a child of the hit position null. Now if we hit play, then we see our valve stem assembly is moving with the hit null. But if we look closer, we can see that the valve stem is intersecting the cam object. And we could zero out the position of the shaft and spring hierarchy, but it could mess something up in the hierarchy. So let's just grab the y-axis of the shaft and spring and move it slightly there. So now it's working perfectly. Let's go back to our perspective view, F1, and take a look. Okay, so let's go back into front view F4 and start working on our spring. Okay, so let's set up the Espresso for the spring. I'm using an unconverted helix object, so we can access the height parameter and use that to control our spring. But first, let's change the display uh, in our viewport so we can uh, better see the spring geometry. 
So go up to display and set it back to hidden lines. Then go back up and choose wireframe. Good, now we can see what we're doing. Now, if you see, I have this object called the upper housing static washer object, and we'll use that to measure our distance. So if we hit play, you can see that the upper housing static washer object does not move, and that's what we need. So if we go back to the helix and note where the axis is for the helix, that's just what we need right at the bottom. We'll measure the distance between the helix axis uh, and the upper housing static washer. So right click in the Expresso window, then go to New Node, Expresso, Calculate, Distance. In order to calculate the distance between these two objects, we need to drag them into the Expresso window. Let's grab the helix and pull it in there. Hold and drag out the line to the red box and release. Then come down and choose Coordinates, Global Position, Global Position. Now drag in the upper housing static washer object and do the same thing. Once you're done, then grab a result node so we can see what's happening. Hit play and let's see if it's working. Okay, but we want to be able to see it in real time. So let's go to Calculate, Animation Refresh. Now when we hit play, we can see a real-time update. So now let's use that output value to drive the height of our spring. So drag another copy of our helix into the Expresso window. An easy way to locate the property you're looking for in the Expresso node is to locate it in the actual object properties. So in the Expresso node, the height property is going to also be found under Object Properties. But there is another way to access a property, and that is to actually drag the property from the attribute, Attributes Manager directly into the node. Now hook those up, and let's see what we have. If we hit Play, we can see that the spring is working perfectly. So let's go to uh, the Perspective Viewport F1 and add a few more valve setups to the main shaft. Okay, so let's grab the valve mechanism and hold down Command on the Mac and drag a copy, then shift it down the main shaft. But we don't want the cam in the exact same position. So if we go to the valve cam and bushing object and try to rotate it, we can't because it's still constrained to the main shaft. So if we go into the Constraint tag and down into the Attributes Manager, open the Offset property and go to Rotation B and just set it to wherever you like. Now let's hit Play. All right, so that's looking good. So let's copy another valve mechanism. Uh, this time rotate the entire mechanism by rotating the valve mechanism null. Then we can drag it forward on the main shaft. I'm not positioning these precisely, I just want to show you how to do this. Then go back into the constraint tag and change rotation B on the cam. Alright, so that looks good. And everything seems to be working very nicely. and we still have plenty of viewport response. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that you add the amazing ray collision node to your C4D toolbox. Thanks and until next time, bye.